Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Bulls. On today's episode, we're talking about DeMar DeRozan making the All-NBA second team. Zach Levine had a successful knee surgery on that left knee, and we'll also be doing a prospect, uh, a draft prospect on Jalen Williams. All that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. Michael! Oh! You are Locked on Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat, the designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze. I'm CEO Hayes, all around good guy and creator of Chicago Bulls Central. All around <laughs> good guy. Yeah, I'm all around good guy. All I'm all around right. good guy, man. Listen, I've been I've been getting getting the uh. Uh, reputation of being a little bit of an a hole around here, and you know I have to make sure everybody knows I'm I'm a little bit of a good guy. A little bit of a good guy, not all around. It's not, not all around. This no. way the other way. Uh, yeah, you know. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm come back to reality. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a good guy. Um, nonetheless, <laughs> that's how we start the show. Let's get it. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, Pat. DeMar DeRozan, all-NBA second team. But one thing that we also need to talk about, Zach Levine did not make any all-NBA teams, which was expected. Yeah. Missed out on that Supermax. But let's let's not negativity. Let's stay around the positive. DeMar DeRozan, all-NBA second team, the worst signing of the offseason. What, what, what do you think about this? Uh, I'm excited about it. I mean, I, I think it's an accolade he deserved. I think the second half of that season hurt him being all-NBA first team mm-hmm. um, because Jason Tatum, the second half of the season, was absolutely cooking. Uh, and I think that's where that swap came in. Uh, but still, 27.9 points per game on 50% shooting from the field. Oh, and by the way, he upped his three-point percentage to the highest of his career in year 13. People usually don't do that, dog. 35% from the three-point line. Granted, that's still only on like two three-pointers a game. But hey, nonetheless, man, uh, Kudos to DeMar DeRozan. Really excited uh, that he made that. I don't know if there – were there any uh, – I'm sure there were, but were there any contract um, stipulations that if he made an all-NBA team, he gets kicked like an extra couple mil or something like that? Nothing that I've seen. Now, I do know that uh, – that uh, um, what's uh, Chico DeBard's son's name? Oh, uh, Trey Young. Uh, he gets an extra $34 million over the course of his contract. <laughs> <laughs> because he did make all NBA third team, but I haven't seen anything about DeMar DeRozan. But one of the things that I do want to point out with the NBA, man, this is one of the things that grinds my gears just a little bit. He was listed for the all-star team as a guard. He's listed as a forward for the all NBA teams. That's the first time in history. Somebody has been listed as a different position for the all NBA teams. than they were, were for all-star voting. So, uh that's position, just, that's just position is weird bro like i don't yeah. know anymore like listen we're talking about dudes that are 16 coming into the nba that are that are built like point guards like i don't know yeah. anymore <laughs> but no yeah. I, I i'm glad that demar uh got recognized for it i mean listen uh, it's like i put in the picture you know what i'm saying 27.9 points per game uh 50 from the field one wilt record you better recognize my boy uh, I think I think the biggest question around Bulls Nation, not not to take anything away from this, but can DeMar keep that up? Well, I mean, you're looking at a player in his 32 year old season having statistically the best season of his career. Yeah, that's rare in, in of itself. Now, asking if he can keep that up. Um, here's the thing that I'm going to say with that. DeMar shouldn't have to keep it up because with the growth of IO growth of Patrick Williams, Zach coming back, he shouldn't have to have those numbers. Yeah. And you know, he still should be very efficient. The efficiency numbers should stay the same, but hopefully DeMar doesn't have to do that much of the heavy lifting anymore um, with an improved team and hopefully improved bench as well to where, you know, it, even if that drops down a little bit, so the other players around him pick up their averages, which, you know, keeps the team being as good as what it was in the first half of the season. We don't need to see no more of that second half of the season. Yeah. No, I, I think that's, to me, the biggest impact isn't the points per game for DeMar. The biggest impact isn't the the percentages for DeMar, right? Because DeMar's always been a pretty efficient player. I think he's had one year in his career, uh, maybe two, where he wasn't that efficient from the field. Um, but the, the biggest impact for me is, does DeMar's attitude rub off on P. Will, which I think if P. Will had played a full season with DeMar, uh, we would have seen that. 
uh, DeMar's effect on Ayo DeSumo and making him comfortable in the NBA in year one, which we saw that the entire season. Uh, I think we would have seen that same kind of development for P. Will from that as well. Mm -hmm. And listen, there's something to be said. I know a lot of people don't look at it that way, the same way I do. There's something to be said about learning how to win. DeMar DeRozan hasn't won a championship. But DeMar DeRozan, at a minimum, knows how to get to a certain point. He knows how to win games. He just didn't have the team around him to get him to that next point. And unfortunately, he wasn't the level of player to just elevate the rest of the players that he had, like Kawhi did, to get them to that next point. And so for me, like that's the biggest impact that DeMar has on this team. Zach Levine, as much as everybody's like, Zach Levine's now the number two on this team. Zach Levine had to learn how to win. This is Zach Levine's first winning season ever. <laughs> in the NBA anyway and then people forget too like so often do, and this is how you know people who don't actually you know take in basketball they just look at the at the box score that people forget that at the beginning of the season Zach and DeMar were right there neck and neck <laughs> until the thumb thing happened they yeah. were right there neck and neck so no 100% man I'm I'm excited about it I mean where do you see DeMar's role growing with this team, do you see him still being a? I mean, honestly, right? Like all NBA second team, twenty-seven points a game. That don't really make sense. It, it's really the second half of the season that mm -hmm. did that. But like, do you see him being a all NBA second, all NBA third team guy for the Bulls for the duration of his contract? Do you see him falling further than that? Do you see him staying the number one? I, I mean, Demar's game is not based off athleticism right so even if his athleticism does start taking hit like demar's it's just intelligence it's footwork yeah. it's being smart with the basketball um so you you can definitely see demar having the same impact i'd, I'd say yeah i can expect demar probably the lowest dropping on all nba third team he has two years left on the chicago bulls i can see mm -hmm. that i can see that for sure Okay. Yeah. I, I I just want but listen. Hopefully for good reasons, right? Hopefully because Patrick Williams and and Io DeSumo are developing in the right direction. That's those are those are two key pieces, right? If we do go out and get uh um you know a rookie this season, he helps with that. I I love the veteran presence Demar brings. I really mm -hmm. do love that he brings that to the team. Um and and to me like the the combination of him with Zach. I'll say this. I I would bet uh as we're gonna get into Zach Levine kind of and and what his knee um how his surgery is going, I would bet we see Zach Levine on this list next year. Unfortunately, a year too late, though. Exactly. But, yeah, oh, yeah, Zach, Zach, listen, Zach is making an all-NBA team next year. I have no doubts about that at all. The question is, is do we have three players making all? Because I'll tell you what, the brand of basketball Lonzo Ball was playing, if he can stay healthy for a full season, I see him making an all-NBA team as well. How many people are they letting on an All NBA team? That's the that's the question, right? Like you're yeah. not gonna see a lot of like like Jalen Brown was hooping you, as well. Did he make one? Uh, let me pull I don't this. Jalen Brown made one this year. No, uh, he did not. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't do a lot of like multiple, multiple players from from a team. They usually be like, "Here's your best player. He made the All NBA team. That's all you're gonna get." That's um, fair. Are there That's any? Fair. Are there any that are two players on the same team? Are there so I'm teams? looking. So we got. Are there any teams that actually have two players on the same team that should make? I, the Celtics definitely should. Well, Chris Paul and Devin Booker. They both made All NBA teams. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. right, well. Hey. Yeah. Blew that point out of the water, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's possible. Now I'm not saying that. It, it would be very – the Bulls would have to have, like, 62 wins for them to name three players uh, from the same team, I yeah. think, on the, on the, on the all on different uh, teams. But I definitely think that during his Bulls tenure, Lonzo Ball is going to make an all-NBA team. Well, I mean, I, I would hope so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, I think the thing we forget with Lonzo is he's 24 years old. There's a lot of time <laughs> possibly for his Bulls. Bro, I forget tenure. how he young he healthy. is. All the time, bro. Dog. Like, him, all, you know, it's him time. and Steven Adams. They're the two I forget every bro, single you, time. Steven Adams looks 35. Bro, you could not have told me that Steven Adams is not 33 years old. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, I, bro, I, not, only, not only is he not 33, he's that much older than me. He's 28. That's crazy. He's born. He'll be well. No, he'll be twenty nine this year. He's two years older than me. I'll be. Oh no, he's a year older than me. I'll be twenty eight this year. But he's he's one year old. He was born in ninety three. We saw the same stuff. <laughs> it's so weird to me, bro. Like That's Stephen crazy. Adams was like, no, no, I remember dial up. 
Uh, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> That is hilarious, fam. All right. Enough of that. You know, shout out to DeMar DeRozan before we go for making all NBA second team. It was well earned. Great season from DeMar DeRozan. And I can't wait to see what he continues to put on in a Chicago Bulls uniform. But we're going to get into uh, Zach Levine's knee surgery. But first, I got to talk to you guys about a good old faithful around these parts. And that's Bill Bar. Now, I love brownies. I know you guys love brownies as well. And Bill Bar has their new brownie batter puff. That, listen, come on, man. That just sounds amazing. Uh, that is a new creation, and, th- and it's better than anything that they made before. It's a it's a puff that takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. Um, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Puffs are, are chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bars. That's right, delicious-flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. Listen, true story. My son ate one of them today thinking that they were just a candy bar. He loved it. I was a little bit pissed off that he ate my stuff. But nonetheless, he did. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Your son got to enjoy one as well. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> With 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar, brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for, uh, for any day. All Built Bar Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy it. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and, and, and provides tons of health benefits. The Brownie Butter Puffs will have you completely forgetting that you're eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is this is real life. Go to Built.com and get your batter, your Brownie Batter Puffs right now. And use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Yes, that's promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. At built.com. All right, Pat. You know, hate hate over get not getting the puffs aside. You know, not, 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 <laughs> it's not hate. I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm just waiting. One day. Hey, one day, one day, one day you shall have them, bro. They will be yours. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not exactly. that I can't get them free, just tastes better. <laughs> free <laughs> always that this is true. Free always tastes better. Um, but we got some surprising news today. And the fact is something I did not expect at all, bro. When my when my alerts went off and said Zach Levine had su- successful knee surgery today, I was like, huh? Bro, what? Didn't say what? he was going in. Listen, didn't let hey, know nothing. Hey, real G's move in silence like lasagna, <laughs> according to Lil Wayne. So uh <laughs> with that being said, um it's it's good to hear that his scope, uh his arthroscopic uh surgery went well. There was nothing else found in it. I know we had some comments before of people saying, Well, hey. A, a scope is technically to figure out what's going on. We always said and we maintain that the type of scope he was getting was to clean out the knee, and yeah. that's exactly what happened. They didn't find anything else in there. It was really just to relieve pain. He's expected to make a full recovery. Uh, it's good that he got it around this time. He's going to be back ready for training camp, everything else, for whatever team he's playing for, <coughs> Chicago Bulls. But, uh, Pat, what does this say to you? Zach Levine's successful knee surgery. How do you feel? Uh, we should feel good about it. Um, they said successful and that he's going to be back to 100%. 100% of Zach Levine was very much like we just said with DeMar DeRozan. He was a 50-40-85 guy. Um, he was 27 points a game, just about 28 points a game. Um a hundred percent of Zach Levine is a problem on the court, no matter how you want to slice it, no matter what you want to look at. Um, and, and I'm, I'm glad that he's feeling that he'll be feeling better and he'll be good to go for the start of the season because I think he's a leader that you need out there for the Chicago Bulls. I think that's mm-hmm. the one thing about Zach, right? Like you saw that fire in him, you saw that that heart in him. Um, now we know why he was in LA. All the everybody freaking out about the TMZ report, which is wild, right? Like he had to literally like go in like this morning and be done because yeah. I'm assuming that you, that video from TMZ today was from last night. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> like so. Um, I it, it's good to hear that he's 100% healthy. I, I I don't expect it to have any implications on the contract negotiations at all. AK kind I feel like AK this isn't a Lonzo Ball situation. Like I feel like AK knew that this was going to be simple go in clean yeah. up because you heard him in the post game pr- or in the uh, end of season presser say the knee's going to have no effect on the contract whatsoever. So yeah. uh, good to know that Zach's healthy, man, and good to know that he'll be good to go by the beginning of the season. Um, I think the Bulls might have to do a little bit more managing his career moving forward, uh, managing his minutes and stuff like that. But other than that, I'm excited to, to see what next season is going to bring with a healthy Zach. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And on that uh, next season. So as many of us know, Zach Levine is set to sign a max contract um, <clears throat> with whatever team. Maxes are different depending on the team that has him now, which is the Chicago Bulls versus him signing with another team. Um, and so in us talking about this, you brought up an interesting point that kind of caught you off guard. Zach Levine's max with the Chicago Bulls is $212 million. Bro. It's $157 million <laughs> if any other team. $55 million. And I think people don't really understand that because it's easy when you're talking about NBA players. But, oh, $5 million. Oh, $10 million. $55 million. Now, that is offset a little bit if he does go to, to one of the states that doesn't have uh, sales tax and things like that so he wouldn't get taxes out of. But even then, that only mitigates it some. $55 million. I think you got to five million dollars. I think you got to see the numbers written out. <laughs> like, I, the, like it really, like I kept hearing fifty five million, right? And I'm uh, like, oh yeah, fifty five million. But they probably figure out like some incentive or something like that. Too. But when you see two hundred and twelve, this is per Dane Greenboard on Shy Sports Updates. Does a great job. Said that the Bulls can only that they can only offer him now because he didn't make an All NBA team two hundred and twelve million two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. The full max another team can offer Levine would be a four-year deal worth $157,380,000. That's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going And, and something that I want to point out as well is that there, there was a misconception that some people thought that if Zach Levine is signed and traded, that means that he can still get the full max that he can get with the Bulls. You can't. The no. Bulls are only team that can, even if he if he is signed and traded, he still is only getting that $157 million, not the full $212 million. So with that being said, again, as we've been telling you guys, everything is pointing to Zach Levine. I don't, Yo, I don't you, agree yeah. with you. Listen, that's real. I don't think I knew that. I thought I thought you could sign him. Uh, no, he has, to, he has to play a year. He can't sign and be traded this season. Well, that's—I right? mean, a sign he, and trade this season. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, off season. Yeah, if you yeah, sign yeah. and trade it this offseason, he off would have season, to play a year to yeah. get the. He would have to actually sign and stay with the Chicago Bulls, and whatever happens later at that point. Like, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but yeah, if he's if, if at the end of the day, this offseason, if this offseason does not end with Zach Levine being in a Bulls uniform, he getting one. He's, he gets the hundred and fifty-seven. Yeah, it's not yeah, the yeah. two twelve. Put me on game. Listen, hey, I, I, I don't act like I know everything coming into these contract <laughs> negotiations, all that stuff, dog. They be throwing bro, numbers around that now, I hope to be having contract negotiations with one day. Bro, <laughs> this, is why, this is why I just started Chicago Bull Central this year because literally everything, like draft, capology, like I, I've I, like how they build in Patrick Williams game. I built my basketball knowledge over like a decade because listen, bro. Capology is like seriously, and I still only have a very small understanding of it in the grander scheme of things. Yeah, that, that's that you need an MIT class for that. Yeah, no, I take I take the sports <laughs> talk approach. I let somebody <laughs> smarter than me put all the numbers together, <laughs> and then I I spit them numbers back at you, and I get my opinion on them numbers <laughs> on numbers that I hope to one day be having contract negotiations on. <laughs> Let's get locked on on that level. Oh, uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not. <laughs> I, I by no means feel like I'm a capologist in any of this, bro. I, hey, the, it, I'm still throwing off the Steven Adams is 28, bro. I, that number's still <laughs> on my board, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got that number on the screen still right now, so that's where I'm at with it. Man, yeah, yeah. You know, shout out to Zach Levine for, uh, for you know, having a successful surgery. Everything was what we've all been told. And I know, and I understand the skepticism, right? Are they really hiding something? Is it more serious? But we've always been told there was nothing structural, right? It was nothing at all with the knee. Um, he was just, they couldn't figure out the pain. Once they said they couldn't figure out the pain, all signs pointed to being in the scope to relieve that pain. And he's expected to be back at 100%. And 100% Zach Levine, that's a bad, bad guy. Like, a hobbled Zach Levine was 12th in the whole NBA in scoring. <laughs> Give me that 100% Zach Levine. Let's get up. Let's get into the top 10 to score in this. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's what you got. to. And, and the other thing that you got to think about, too, is that, like, He's he's going to come back with the mindset that everybody doesn't think he can do it now. Mm, that's a good point. That's an even more dangerous Zach Levine when you look at that. And I think the, the one thing that you're excited about and you're happy about, I think the thing that I was most happy about is that, you know, like doctors can tell you you can't do more damage until they get in there and they're looking at it and they be like, ooh. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was, and, and listen, y'all know, like I, I get we have better trainers. We got better doctors with the Bulls now. We're not dealing with Jeff Tanaka no more. But uh, is that really his name? I feel like that's just the name I've given him because he was so I terrible. I think that was actually his name. Was that actually his name? Yeah. All right, cool. But um, but no, I just, I, I, I'm glad that they didn't get in there and they were like, oh no, this is exactly what we thought it was going to be. Wow. Clean it up Jeff up Tanaka is now working for the Chicago Fire. Those poor bastards. <laughs> what wow. injuries have they experienced, bro? <laughs> bro, you know there's some dude on the fire that, like, got a soccer ball to the face. And Jeff just looked at him like, man, you bleeding a lot. You might want to get that took care of, bro. Oh, man. That's still just down. Me... I got to get let me let me old man shuffle my way out on the field like I'm on hockey, uh, uh, like I'm on ice for the Chicago Blackhawks, even though this is grass. This is almost as bad as as Jim Boylan still getting paid to coach. Bro, Jim Boylan is is in charge of the youth, bro. This so, oh my god. Bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. I completely stepped on you. No, nah, that's the end of it, bro. Hey, listen, I I tell you this right now. Before we get into this. Uh, into this breakdown of Jalen Williams, bro. I, I, you couldn't have paid me enough to to bet on Jeff Tanaka getting another job after almost <laughs> killing multiple people. But we do want to tell y'all about Bet Online. Uh, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Like, hey, where's Jeff Tanaka? At? I put a hundred dollars on the fact that he's not going to be somewhere next year. Uh, find all the latest odds, news, and sports development, including this year's NBA playoffs. MLB scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. We got so much stuff coming up with football. Oh, I love football. Uh, Bet online is your continued mm. search for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head over to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online. Swear the game starts. All right. Now, got to get back to the, 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 the draft profiles. Let's talk about a player. We're talking about Jalen Williams on this one. And this is somebody who is slated to be around the, the Bulls draft pick. Now, he did move up a little bit after the combine, but it really everybody moves up after the combine. And really, the only people that get hurt by the combine, it's, it seems like, are the upperclassmen. If you're yeah. a junior or a senior, after the draft combine, if you were expecting to go in the first round, just go ahead and sit that down. Yeah, you're going late. Yeah, you're going late. You're going late. Uh, he was a lottery pick. <laughs> he went to the combine. Second rounder. Huh? <laughs> You got to imagine, too, if you're an agent of an upperclassman, man, you just be sitting around like, man, come on. Come on, man. Come on. Oh, dang it. Oh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> Jalen Williams. Because they come in ready. So until they start playing, like Io's agent is probably like. Yeah. That two year. <laughs> hey, listen, because he signed that two year uh, second round. Yeah, do. his agent's like, hey, man, listen, next offseason, we getting paid. Let me get um, in on that. <laughs> but Jalen Williams from Arkansas, sophomore, he'll be 20 years old by time. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. By the time the season starts, he'll be 20 years old. His birthday's in June. 6'10", 235 pounds at 19 years old. That's legit NBA size. Um, he has player comps to Bobby Portis and Eldon Campbell. Uh, are his, uh, now, his stats aren't anything to blow it out the water. Freshman year, 3.7 points per game. Sophomore year, on 31 minutes per game, 10.9 points. But. Almost 10 rebounds a game, almost three assists per game, 1.3 steals per game, and 1.1 blocks per game. This is a bad, bad man. He's very active. He has great court vision. He's strong as hell, too. Not just having the size, but has the strength to go along with that. Now, he has his perimeter shooting. It's oh, it's it, it's a work in progress. It is something that you can look at his stroke and say, A, this is we we may be able to turn you into maybe not a volume three-point shooter, but if you left open out there, you can give us some things. Again, another player that I think has a skill set that you can kind of see him contributing maybe right away to with lower averages, but he does have an extreme amount of upside if you're able to really put in and work on his game. Pat, turn it over to you. What do you think about Jalen Williams? Uh, it's about how much time the Bulls want to take to develop somebody. Are we at the development stage or are we at mm -hmm. the, I need an impact player now, right? Like that, That's the question between a Jalen Williams or an EJ Liddell at this point. The thing about Jalen Williams that, that does get me excited, right? Like you, everybody looks at the averages. I hate the average watchers 
when you don't actually look at how the games go. Like, it's, it's, mm-hmm. for me, it's how people look at Chris Middleton. It's like, dog, he averages 25 a game. It's like, yeah, but he had 40, 40, 4, 4, 4, 40, 40, 4. Like, so I, I like to get into the game by game. The thing that you notice about his game by game and looking at his tape as well, towards the middle to the end of the season is when he's really caught his groove, really started to improve again. He became more of a scoring force for Arkansas throughout the season, averaging about – uh. I would say about 14, 15 points a game uh, towards the end of that season there. Mm-hmm. Um, still giving you the great rebounding numbers, pretty much gave you that all throughout the season, but really came on late in the season. And that's where you start to see, right? That's why you see 10 points a game. But as you see it go through, you know what I'm saying? You see some 22-pointers, 19-point games, 16, 15-point games. Those are things that you that you feel good about, right, heading into the draft. It's probably why you, you see him starting to move up as opposed to down um, like a lot of these guys. But the, the question mark to me will always be, do you have time on him? He's still 19 years old. I'm, listen, the, the difference is, right, he's 19. He's not going to have the same weight at 25. He's 240 now. You can be talking about a guy that's 250, 255 by the time he's 25 years old, 6'10". Uh, but the question is, do you have the time to wait? Where do you feel like the Bulls are at um, <coughs> with this pick? Do they need somebody that can come in and make an impact now? Or do you draft somebody that you have time to develop? Me personally, I feel like you've got your two development pieces right now. I don't think you can you can compete right now and have two. more than no, Marco. You've got three if you count Marco, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't feel like you I, – I really don't feel like you can have more than two. I think the difference is, like, now that's the importance of the G League. Yeah. Like, Marco got real practice time, real game time, whether it's versus NBA players or not. He's implementing the things that the Bulls are doing. Yeah. And I think the difference – the thing that if Jalen is the pick – and I don't think that – he will be, but if Jalen Williams is the pick, the thing that may be able to that you can look at him and say, "Hey, no, we can play him now." Is the fact that Jalen Williams can guard anybody on the court. Yeah, like he can switch on the guards and stay with guards. Now, again, those were college guards. NBA guards are going to be a little bit faster, so maybe he, he's not going to be able to stay with them as much. But his defensive versatility, I think, is definitely something that the Bulls can use. Um, but I, I agree with you there. It really just depends on how much potential. Like, we're trying to compete now, right? right now. Like, the, everything points to, especially once Zach Levine signs on the dotted line, it's go mode to compete today. Yeah. And so, with already having Patrick Williams, who still needs time to develop, Io, who's ready, right? But he still has to develop some. Like, he's not his final form quite yet. Yeah. And having Marco Simonovic there, that's the difference. If we didn't have Marco there as a potential development piece, I would probably be higher on the Bulls selecting Jalen Williams in this draft because it can give you something two, three years down the road that maybe he can be a player by then. But are we still betting on Marco Simonovic to be a player by then? At that point, it's like, mm. I mean, are we though? Here's here's the question. Like we 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 constantly bring up Marco because he's a part of the team yeah. and he fits AK's mold, right? A second round guy that AK wants to stash and develop, and and that's how Jokic got here. Mm-hmm. Um. But let's – Marco's a second-round pick. Are we holding him at that level of, no, I need this guy to develop for us to get to that next level? I need him to move in the right – or are we holding him in the – you're a second-round pick. Like, if you don't develop, you don't develop. See, that's the, – the thing is, while – I, I mean, you agree. I don't think you can ever say a second-round pick is a bust because it's a second-round pick. Yeah. I'm going to quote you on this. Everybody on this team is a need at this point. And I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. If Marco's going to be sitting here on this team, we need him to develop uh, to a point. To, like, I understand rookie year, you're coming over from overseas. You don't necessarily – adjusting to the speed of the game, the physicality of the game, I understand all that. But having a full offseason here with the Bulls training staff to put on weight, to prepare, to work yeah. on, on your game, if you're not prepared in that second season to at least give the Bulls eight to ten minutes a night, that's an issue for me because you decided to give him the three-year deal over Io the three-year deal, and it's going to cost you money in the long run. Well, quicker, well, more money sooner for Io because his yeah. contract's up. So yeah, Marco needs to start putting in. Man, it's like having somebody in the house that ain't putting in on none of the bills, but eats <laughs> all the food. No, we we need you to put in, brother. I I agree. It's just it's it's if you're going right, like if we're putting that faith in Marco. 
why are we drafting a big? He's huge. Like if you really like he really like I get like weight wise he's not that big, but mm-hmm. if you see him, he's huge. He's a legitimate seven feet tall. Like he playing, has to have like a like a seven three wingspan as well. Right. I mean, he, yeah. He's he's actually huge. Like so if if we're putting that faith in Marco. Could that be why we're seeing them look at guards in the draft? Like maybe they're not going big men in the draft. Like maybe AK does have that faith that Marco's going to take a step next season. But I, I just, I, I wonder about that, right? Because a guy like Jalen Williams would be another development piece that you're bringing in. But at a minimum, you know he comes in. He already, I believe he already weighs more than Marco, right? What's Marco? Two twenty five. 230? He was listed as 220, but we we don't know how much weight he's put on, so he was listed as 220. So, yeah, Jalen Williams is technically bigger than Marco Simonovich, right? I, I mean, E.J. Liddell is, too. He's well, he not doesn't high, have the height. Height-wise, yeah. he's not as big, yeah. but, I mean, E.J. Liddell's two, 240. Yeah. So, I, I, I wonder about, like, I, I would be interested in a guy like Jalen Williams, but not if we're actually trying to develop Marco into something. Because the guy you're going to take at 18, he he has to be a piece. You know what I'm saying? You're not taking the guy at 18 in the first round and say, hey, uh, it's okay if you suck. Like, you at a minimum got to be a bench player. This is true. So, this is true. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it'll, I don't see the Bulls taking him because Marco's on the team. But then why why would you take EJ Liddell? Or why would you take – like, I guess EJ Liddell can play more of the four. Uh, but but if Mark Willis falls or Mark Williams falls to you, why would you take a Mark Williams? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's a lot of questions as far as the Bulls roster construction because we don't really know exactly who's going staying on this bench. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's and also AK and Eversley, we I I just think they're gonna draft best available. I've always said that I think that that's, that's what they're gonna go with. Whoever they have on their board as being the best player available, that's who that's who they're going to draft. But, you know, they're interviewing a lot of guards. Um, we haven't seen or heard about them really interviewing too many forwards quite yet. So maybe that is their mindset. Maybe AK is like, hey, Marco, I trust that Marco is going to be ready to give us. Or they're going to say, hey, Marco can give us something, but we're also going to bring in a veteran to supplement. Yeah. And we're going to bring Marco along that, that way. So yeah. it, it could be. And it could be even moving the pick. You know what I'm saying? For, that for, could be an option as well. It, it could be even moving the pick to go get a big. So it's going to be interesting to see, man. I, I'll say this. Um, I I have confidence that AK will make the right move at the big man position this offseason, no matter what it is. I really do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I trust AK and Eversley to do what needs to be done. Bro, I just, I've been looking it up because I wanted to verify. So I went to like three different sources to make sure. Marco Simonovic has a 7-4 wingspan. Which Marco are you looking up? Mar- our Marco Simonovic. Okay, all right. You got to be careful because, you know, there's, the like, the four, there's yeah. like the 45-year-old Marco Simonovic yeah, yeah, that played. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, why, that's, why, that's why I've been double-checking. I just yeah. wanted to make sure. A 7-4 wingspan? That's why you want him to be good. Hey, and he dribbles like a guard. That's wild. <laughs> and he That's dribbles, crazy. And he dribbles like a guard. <laughs> That's wild. Okay. Yeah, um. But yeah, as far as Jalen Williams to come back to Jalen Williams, like I said, if he if he were to be the pick, and this is what I try to talk about, if he were to be the pick, how would I feel about it? And really, as just the player himself, I could I would understand it and probably talk myself into it. Um, like again, the Bobby Portis comps are that that's always gonna get me get me as to be positive because I really like what Bobby Portis even brought to the Chicago Bulls initially in his um in in his tenure here and then what he went a, went out and was able to develop into. Yeah. But Jalen the Jalen Williams pick to me would would almost more so feel like a team that's still trying to get to being a playoff team, not being a playoff team. Whereas the uh, EJ Liddell pick. Seems like a, t- a a team that is a playoff team that's looking for somebody who can come in right away and give them some things. The Bulls, I, I think this is the one way to me that the Bulls would draft Jalen Williams. Somebody wants Jalen Williams on their team and they know they can't get up high enough to get him. The Bulls would have to draft him to trade <clears throat> him for a veteran that's on that team. Mm. Okay, that's the one way I would see the move because it's. I agree with you. It, it's a it's a building block move. Jalen Williams will probably be a he'll probably be a monster in the NBA in three four years, but in three four years we got a completely different team. Yeah, so. I will say this though. Long term, potentially, 
Uh, Patrick Williams, Jalen Williams. Again, another Williams and Williams. Uh, uh, <laughs> front court could be pretty solid. I wouldn't be mad at it. I'm yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm more excited for the day. Like I like the roster the way it's built now, but I'm very excited for the day when we get a big in there and all of a sudden we can move P Will back to the three. Yeah. 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 P Will like move. Zach, like Lonzo, Zach, P Will. Not to say I want DeMar coming off of the bench. Or I don't want DeMar on the team, but I mean DeMar's 32, 33, coming into his age 33 season now. Um He's not going to be there forever, and and P will at the three to me is is a scarier force than P will at the four, yeah. And that's a large <sighs> lineup. <laughs> and so a lot of the mock drafts updated today as well. So FYI, I'm going to give some updates on some of the players we talked about before. It seems like Mark Williams is starting to drop back down in mocks, which Got to me that's that. a little bit that's that's a little bit questionable. Like why why is he dropping down? <sighs> I got to look at it. I don't know. It, 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 a lot of times, dog, these dudes drop because they're like, nah, I'm not going to that workout. That's I'm true. not going to. You know That's what I'm true. saying? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what the what the drop reason is. So I got to look into that more before I comment on it. And Tari Eason has today after it updated, a lot of the mocks updated in this afternoon, has went up from being around 12th to 6th in some mocks drafts now. That's crazy for a player that started off this season being in the second round to in some mocks being six or eight. <laughs> you know, what's funny. The mock drafts get thrown off by one team, one, one team, making, bro. A, making a surprise. Pick. Mock drafts <laughs> were blown up but, the year we took Patrick but, Williams. But, you know, all it takes <laughs> is this. This, 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 is, this is what blows up mock drafts for anybody who's not aware is that all it takes is for one Spurs trainers not even an exec to say yeah I, you know I, I i heard i heard we're gonna take tar yeason and then all of a sudden now people are like Ooh. oh oh he's going up the spurs are taking tar. like Bro, that's all it takes man that's if all popovich takes. says something if if Kerr says something if anybody oh. says it's just like well, they looking at him. We got to be looking at him. We need exactly. him at the top of the draft. <laughs> let let Greg Popovich say, "Yeah, man, I, you know, I, I feel like Mark Williams could could it could be a future star. He's going to be right back or, up the next or week." Or even Jordan. Remember, remember before um, Charlotte really started talking about Lamelo Ball. Like Lamelo was like sixth or seventh because people didn't want to deal with his dad. Yeah, and then like Michael Jordan's like, "Nah, we might take this kid." Sit him up the board. <laughs> <laughs> Man, is, mock drafts are so funny to watch. It's, it's basically getting that close to the draft, how they yeah. how they go up and down. But uh, that's it from us for today. Go ahead, Pat. Hey, man, follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. Also follow us on everything at Locked on Bulls. We had a couple of funny posts today on uh, the Locked on Twitter today and on Locked on Instagram. So tune in with us on that as well. You can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z E. Thank you for tuning in to making Locked On Bulls your first listen of the day. Now, for your second listen, go and listen to Locked On NBA, where the Locked On experts give an analysis on the playoffs and every affecting all 30 teams. Matter of fact, if it's anything NBA related, Locked On NBA got you covered. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. But that is it from us for today. We love you guys, man. Peace, y'all. Stay safe out there, man.